support from a besieged city. Too old to carry arms and fight like the others, I was mercifully given the supporting role of a chronicler. I write down, not knowing for whom, a siege's history. I have to be precise, but I don't know when the siege began. Two centuries ago, in December, September, dawn yesterday, we here are all suffering from the loss of a sense of time. We were left only the place and an attachment to the place. We govern ruins of temples, ghosts of gardens and houses. If we lose our ruins, we will be left with nothing. I write as best I can in the rhythm of these endless weeks. Monday. Stores are empty. A rat is now the unit of currency. Tuesday. The mayor has been killed by unknown assassins. Wednesday. Ceasefire talks. The enemy interned our envoys. We don't know where they are. That is where they were shot. Thursday. After a stormy meeting, a majority of votes rejected the motion of the local merchants for unconditional surrender. Friday. Plague broke out. Saturday. In in, a staunch defender committed suicide. Sunday. No water. We resisted an assault at the eastern gate. The one called the gate of the covenant. I know it's all monotonous. It won't move anyone to tears. I avoid comment, emotion, keep a tight rein. Write on facts. It appears only facts have value on the foreign markets. But with a kind of pride, I long to bring news to the world of the new breed of children we raised owing to the war. Our children don't like fairy tales. They have their fun killing, waking and sleeping. They dream of soup of bread and bone, just like dogs and cats. In the evening, I like to wander along the edges of the city, skirting the borders of our uncertain liberty. I watch from above an ant procession of troops. Their lights, I listen to the noise of drums and the barbarians shrieking. It is truly beyond me why the city is still defending itself. The siege is taking a long time. Our enemies have to take turns. Nothing unites them apart from the desire for our destruction. Goths, Tartars, Swedes, Caesar's men, ranks of the Transfiguration. Who can count them? The banners change their colours like a forest against the horizon. A delicate bird, yellow in spring, through green to winter's black. Then in the evening, freed from the facts, I can meditate on ancient questions, remote ones. For instance, about our allies across the sea. I know they feel sincere compassion. They send flower sacks, encouragement lard, and good advice. They don't even know it was their fathers who betrayed us. They were our allies from the time of the second apocalypse. The sons are blameless, deserve gratitude, so we are grateful. They have not lived through a siege long as an eternity. They who are touched by misfortune are always alone. Defenders, 
of the Dalai Lama, the Kurds and the Afghans. Now as I write these words, those who favour appeasement have acquired an advantage over the party of the staunch, an ordinary mood swing. The stakes are still being weighed. Cemeteries are growing, the number of defenders shrinking. But the defence continues, and it will continue to the end. And if the city falls, and one man survives, he will carry the city inside him on the paths of exile. He will be the city. We look into hunger's face, the face of fire, face of death, the worst of all, the face of betrayal. And only our dreams have not been humiliated.